It may surprise you, but Michigan is one of the top three floriculture states in the nation, right behind Florida and California. And before these plants ever get in your backyard, well, they have to start out at greenhouses like these. And this one here has its future relying on protecting the environment while meeting a growing consumer demand. The racks of bedding plants are on the move, ready for retail delivery after getting their start under glass here at Elzinga and Hooksima Greenhouse in Portage, Michigan. My father started the business in the late 50s and he retired in 1998. The operation expanded over the years to 30 acres of greenhouses at five locations in Michigan's Kalamazoo area. It's a very competitive industry now. Um, there's lots of product out there. There are 12 acres of plants under glass here, and while 12 might not seem like a lot, trust me, it's pretty big once you get inside. Big enough that the employees use bicycles to get around. While conditions here are tightly controlled with heating systems, this growing operation is directly impacted by the weather, just not in the way you might think. You need a nice sunny day for people to work in their garden, and you need a nice weekends continuously for people to buy plants and work in their gardens and things like that. When you, when you have rain, cold, snow, wet weather, it hurts our sales. The farm's window for selling their plants only runs from April to June, so even a few bad weather weekends during that time. It can be devastating. In the nursery business, the customer is king, so the folks here have to stay on top of trends. The company is just one of a handful of area growers that have organic greenhouses certified by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. But Mark Elzinga admits they didn't get into organic for altruistic reasons. We definitely went into organics not because we're former hippies or tree huggers. We went in it for the money. And there was an opportunity to um, upgrade our vegetables and charge more for them. Today, four acres of plants are grown organically in a separate greenhouse. Wind and geothermal energy are also in use. In a corner of the operation, Roger Rosenthal shows me how to brew up something critical to their organic operation, something called compost tea. Roger, what are you going to do with all this here? We're going to fill these up? Yeah, we're going to fill these up and we're actually going to use this to make compost tea. Now, what are, what are we putting this into? What are we looking at here, these, um, these things? You could call it a tea bag right, or right. Um, a tea canister. Um, Except I don't think I want to drink this. What's going on in this soil right now? It's full of microbes, uh, things like bacteria and fungi, protozoa, and nematodes. And that's good to promote growing? Yes. So now it's time to make tea. Yep. Let's do it. Hey, the hot tub's ready. <laughs> it's bubbling good. Yeah, we need a lot of air in there. Uh, that's really uh, what helps extract the microbes. But that's not hot water. Uh, no, this is uh, room temperature water, uh, pumped full of a lot of air. Uh, now we're going to add to the top. Just so a big contraction here. Uh-huh. Well, oh, that's going to take two of us. <laughs> Is that good? Yep, that's good. And now we're going to add our canisters in so there. So these go right down inside these holes. Right. Does it matter where we put them? Uh, every other holder. It's good? Mm -hmm. So that soil is getting a nice little bath right now. Right. And what, what's going on? What are we, what's, what's happening? Um, well, now we're going to add more air to it. We're actually going to take a uh, tube and pump air right into the compost. And there's air coming out of there, you can feel it. Yeah. So what's, what's why, why do you need air going down in? Um, well, we're trying to extract the microbes directly out, out of the compost. This tea will brew for 36 hours and be mixed with water to be used as organic fertilizer, fungicide, and insecticide. It didn't take long for the organic impact to be felt across this operation, besides the marketing benefits. It used to cost us $1,700 a week to fertilize. Now it's less than $17. That's amazing. Yeah, we're real, we're real happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
The fruits of their labor are on display at a nearby Meyer Supercenter grocery store. I think that you really need to, to find that customer that's looking for organics. I think that um, there's definitely a demand for it. I wouldn't say that probably it is a, a big demand at this point. It's kind of more of a niche type thing, but it definitely there is a customer out there that's looking for organic, um, sustainable practices you know, that were involved in producing it. Mark's dad, Jake, started selling plants to Meyer in 1962, so you know, it was 49 years going on a 50-year relationship. Their knowledge of our stores and our markets is probably in many cases just as good or better than ours, so that they're able to help us get the right product in the right stores at the right time. Meeting consumer demands in the aisle and under glass.